I'm Jasmine Moradi, and you're listening to the Queens of Tech podcast, a podcast series about raising the voice of workplace champions. 60 plus questions in around 30 to 40 minutes with women of color, non-binary and transgender influencers about their journey into STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I started the Queens of Tech podcast initiative in May 2022 because I would like to retain more women of color, non-binary, and transgenders in the tech industry. Talent is out there, but our work environment needs to improve for all to feel safer, stay authentic, and to be valued for our contributions. My vision is to raise the workplace ecosystem for all in tech by killing the imposter syndrome, stopping bad behavior, and increasing equity opportunities. Each podcast talk is built around 60 plus questions regarding upbringing, education, career path, DIB, and future advice. My mission is to bridge a gap between schools and workplaces by getting into the heart of my guest's personal life and career journey to inspire other girls, women of color, non-binary, and transgenders to unleash the full potential to reach top leadership roles in the tech industry. My goal is to raise the voices of tech champions around the world and together with companies, investors, and politicians, raise the challenges and opportunities around equity, inclusive, diversity, and belonging in our workplaces. Enough is enough. I would like to enforce companies to build a sustainable, inclusive culture to retain diverse talent so we keep the workforce power equity to continue building future diverse and inclusive products. Representation matters. Your voice matters. In this episode, I'm very excited to welcome my guest, Tech Queen Priyanka Vaziriani, co-founder of Vol. Hi, Jasmine. So excited to be here. I am so happy to have you joining us, Priyanka. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. I'm glad to hear. Now, let us dive into your journey into STEM. Hope you're ready for the Queens of Tech 60 plus question. Let's do it. Let's warm up with a few fun facts about you. How would you describe your personality in three hashtags? Creative. Curious and intuitive. How would you describe your life in three sentences or hashtags? Honestly, I picture my life as an epic adventure. Yes, there are constant life challenges and hurdles, but you don't just learn and grow. But at the same time, with each win, it also fills you with like joy and like thrills. So yeah, it's one long adventure. What kind of music stimulates and motivates you the most? Electronic music, the beats, just do it for me. And especially recently, Afrobeats. What's your personal motto? I actually had to think about this a little bit. But the one thing that kept popping up in my head was the fact that my friends just called me like the do it girl. So I always say, go for it, do it. Do other people when they're talking about their ideas and they want to take the leap, they want to start something new or like they're thinking about something. And I translate that to me is like, I always think like, I can do it. Whenever I'm starting something, I'm always like, yes, I can do it. Like, it's not about overconfidence. It's just about that belief, right? Because when you think about it for others too, like they already have that notion that they kind of want to do it, which is why they're bringing it out. They just want that validation or that belief or that support system. So that works not just for me, but for people around me too. What is your favorite book? Many Masters, Many Lives resonated with me on another level, but in general, any of Robert Greene's books, um, I think understanding how humans think is very important. So Laws of Human Nature. What is your favorite podcast? I actually don't listen to podcasts. I'm very visual. So either reading or watching is my go-to. Mac or PC? Mac always. There's something interesting about you that most people don't know. I absolutely love animals. And when I was in school, I decided to become vegetarian and I'm still very strong. What is your hidden talent? I can speak four languages and understand five. So if you're talking about me, I can almost understand. (laughs) And if you were going to write a book about your life, what would the title be? I don't know yet, but I'll send you that book. 
Great start. I look forward to that, Priyanka. Now, let us dig deeper. Our childhood has an effect on our adulthood. Our early experiences shape our belief about ourselves, others, and the world. Now, I want to discover your childhood. Where did you grow up? I was born and raised in Bombay, and then I went to LA for college, London for work. And so it's been a very big mix of different countries, but I grew up in India and I feel like a couple of things really resonated with me, which is all about family values and resilience. What was your dream job as a child? Artist. I love painting. What was your favorite subject in school? Math and history. What was your least favorite subject? I hated physics. What would you say is your earliest memory of technology and the arrival of the internet? Oh my God, the modem making those sounds while connecting. Back then it felt so cool and futuristic, but right now it just feels like a joke when I had internet on my watch. Which were the three first technology gathers you owned? The Tawaguchi, a Walkman, and a Nokia phone where I would play the snake game on. Who was your female role model growing up and why? As far as I can think, I'd say Oprah. I remember even talking about her in my college application. How do you think where you grew up and the school you went to and the generation you come from influence your education and career choice? India, culture, family values, very much ingrained. Also, my family is always about dream big and make it happen. So I think that very much the life of an entrepreneur path that I've chosen for myself. In terms of generation, tech wasn't as big of an industry, I'd say, like the startup life. And so when I studied economics and business in college, it was a very standard, like, okay, you have to go in finance or consulting. Like everybody had blinders on. These are the only two parts. And so I went into finance. I obviously loved it, but I didn't want to make that the focus of my career. And so I switched. But I think now people have more options and more time to figure things out. Now, I'm going to read two quotes. First one, how does the universe expect me to choose a career path at 16? I can't even choose what I want for dinner. Second, Abraham Lincoln said, I quote, the best way to predict your future is to create it. So Priyanka, I want to know the choices behind your career path now. Where and what did you study at the university? I studied economics and business at the University of Southern California in LA. When what influenced you to get into your choice and field? Well, I loved math. And when I studied economics in school, I really wondered how anybody could understand what's happening in the world without learning economics. So I went ahead and did my bachelor's and master's in it. What professional roles have you had before that led you to start your own company? Finance to social startup to make an impact and then now a media tech startup. So what does Volve do? Volve is an app. Nine second news for high performing individuals like you and everyone listening to this. <laughs> what is your title and what is your main responsibility? Title is co founder. Main responsibilities are literally strategic planning, creative vision, product management, content direction, everything. What was the reason behind starting exactly this company? So long story short, Shannon and I were working on a social startup before this, and we basically partnered up with a bunch of online companies to raise funds for any kind of urgent crises. And one of the campaigns, we literally had to go out of our way. We just cold emailed a bunch of celebrities hoping to get their help and spread the word amongst our generation through social media because our generation just doesn't read. First of all, there's too much bias in media. And second of all, like, yeah, our attention spans are changing like behaviors with social media. So we basically replicated the social media format into the media industry and thought, how would a consumer want to consume content? And so we really built a product that consumers of today want. And people call us like the smarter TikTok. Impressive. And what does a typical work day or work week look like for you? Truthfully, except for a few team meetings, no day is the same. All boils down to what's important that particular day. I like the quote, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. So Priyanka, what do you love about your role? Again, no day is the same. And again, that's exactly what I love about it. It's always constantly evolving and it kind of like allows me to grow and explore so many things under one title. And what would you say is the best experience you've had 
so far? Any examples? You know, the best feeling is when I randomly meet some of our users at an event or just in life and they tell me how much they love Evolve. And what is the biggest challenge you've encountered so far and how did you tackle it? Limited resources as an early stage founder, especially in consumer tech, you really can't pay your way to get downloads. So you just have to get really crafty and be extremely resilient. And what do you wish everybody understood about your role? Being a founder sounds glamorous, but it's extremely stressful. (laughs) And what is the one common myth about your professional field that you want to disapprove? You don't necessarily need to have all the right experience and the Ivy League tags to create a product that people love. What you need to do is really understand the consumer and the problem you're solving. And this is not just for, you know, like consumer tech. It can be replicated in any field. What do you love about working in the tech industry? Creating innovative products that add value to someone's life. Now comes your role model. Oprah Winfrey said, I quote, think like a queen. A queen is not afraid to fail. Failure is not a stepping stone to greatness. So Priyanka, what has by far been your biggest achievement in your career? Just speaking from both, being validated and funded by Snapchat was huge for us. A billboard on Times Square that we did not pay for (laughs) and recognition in Forbes. Um, 35 million swipes on the app, which is incredible. Um, users emailing us that they love the product and also building a team that enjoys working here. Very impressive. What would you say if the biggest factors help you become successful and your success habits? Being curious and being resilient, being a founder is being stuck on a roller coaster where it's going to go up and it's going to go down, but you are strapped on so you're just going to go through with it and enjoy yourself through the ride how do you measure your own performance at work results talk by itself with success comes failure what is your biggest failure in your career and what did you learn from it i wouldn't necessarily say failures but launching with belly any traction it made us realize the power of community building even before you have a product. And that's something that we did not do. So it's a tip for everyone to go and do it. And we were also really slow initially. Uh, we were like perfectionists. You know, we wanted everything to be perfect, like in design and everything. And we realized the need to just, you know, experiment and just keep pivoting. What is inspiring and motivating you the most in your role and career right now? the reactions of our users and industry giants starting to recognize us and use us as an example to learn how media can go forward in the future. Let us now jump into the influence of mentors, role models, champions, and sponsors. Role models can consciously or subconsciously be a powerful force in our lives. In addition, champions can stand up and advocate for us and open up the world of possibilities. Sponsors match emerging talent with leaders and influential employees who can help us move ahead in our careers. Priyanka, do you have a mentor, champion, or a sponsor today? Sponsors, like advisors, we did not have it initially when we started, and that was a huge lesson learned. We should have focused on getting them early on in our journey. And who is the female, non-binary, or transgender role model you look up to in your field? There's not too many, but (laughs) unfortunately. But obviously in terms of like tech and go beyond tech also, like Whitney Wolf, I think she absolutely crushed it with Bumble and more respect to see her, you know, at the New York Stock Exchange and her IPO with her child in her hand. That was a massive F you to everyone. And Emily Wise, who is not tech, but a female entrepreneur. And I think I really commend her for a community building. History shows there has been more common for men having mentors, champions, and sponsor in business than women. So Priyanka, how important do you think is to have a mentor, champion, and sponsor during one's career? Extremely important. We realize the importance of having founder friends, you know, like be your supporters and champions throughout. And at the same time, advisors, which I mentioned earlier too, like it's extremely crucial because they'll be able to like spot the problems that you are having, which seem big, but they're really not. So they can just squash the problems like in an instant. Let's move on to leadership. Adena Friedman, president and CEO of Nasdaq said, I quote, empowering those around you to be heard and valued 
makes a difference between a leader who simply instructs and one who inspires. And Shirley Sandberg, ex-CEO of Facebook, said, I quote, Leadership is about making others better as a result of your presence and making sure that the impact lasts in your absence. Priyanka, what does leadership mean to you? Similar to what you just mentioned, it's empowering others to shine. And what do you consider a good versus a bad leader? A good leader is somebody who inspires you to do better, listens to your ideas, and is open to change. And a bad leader literally is the opposite. So someone who just dictates and ignores you. How would you describe yourself as a leader? Inspiring and collaborating. And as a leader, what values are most important to you? Sparking your enthusiasm, showing your employees their potential, and also being empathetic. What leadership lessons have you learned that have formed you into the leader you are today? Something that I have learned personally is the power of delegation. I used to micromanage, but I've learned to delegate now. And what are your three strengths and three weaknesses? Strengths, um, first, creative, second, adaptable, and third, rational. I think everything just boils down to logic. And weaknesses, not the most organized. I think that I think faster than my hands can function. And so I have just too many notes and too many different things scattered all around. And uh, second is impatient at times. And the third is I'm also quite self-critical, which is not necessarily the best thing when it comes to putting yourself out there all the time. Let us now jump to the hottest topic in business today, workplace culture, unlocking the power of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Priyanka, what does diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging mean to you personally? Recognizing and appreciating competence, barring gender, race, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What do you consider being three to five sides of good company culture if you were to join a company? A diverse team, a team that likes working with each other, so open communication and shared values. And as a woman, what has been the most significant political or culture barrier in your career and how have you overcome these challenges? I think the tech industry is a boys club. I think this is no secret and nothing pisses me off more when I see someone who just has an idea, someone as in a male who just has an idea or a hypothesis and they get funded to explore a hypothesis versus us who have a product who have traction and we still get no's. So lesson learned is just keep going and try harder. Why do you think it's important for more women, women of color, non-binary and transgender to join the tech industry today? Because we're all using the products that the tech industry is building, it can't be a good product for women unless there are women designing it too. Take, for example, like car crashes, like car crash tests, where it's only recently that they started including the impact of a car crash on women. And it kind of like, you know, really just explains why women have been suffering disproportionately to, from car crashes. Do you and how do you speak with your colleagues, peers and community about DIB challenges, for example, salary gaps and promotions? Well, instead of salary, it's mainly about like funding gaps. It's extremely harrowing to see like in 2022 when 2% of female-led teams got funded and last year that number even dropped to 1.9. So even though we're all talking about it, it's actually decreasing, which is really, you know, hard to see. But yeah, we just better keep going. <laughs> and there are many public and internal discussions about the barriers women, women of color, non-binary and transgender face on reaching high position in the tech industry and getting funding. How do you feel it has affected and is affecting you? And what is your advice how to best unblock these roadblocks? Automatically, if you are funding less women, less women are going to join or start becoming founders because you're going to see other people who are failing, which is a massive red flag, technically. And I think that is terrible. So the one thing that we need to do is to have more women even in these positions of being 
NLP or GP and various VCs and actually having or owning up to the fact that when you talk about funding female founders, you actually go about and do it. And today, tech companies spend a lot of marketing money to track women, women of color, non-binary and transgenders. However, at the same time, they're finding it hard to retain them. Articles show that women are leaving the tech industry. What is your best advice or strategies for how companies can work to build a stronger corporate culture that engages the IB? I think there's only one main strategy, and that's having women in leadership because I'll solve all of your problems. You will be designing team activities that include everybody. You will be designing or recruiting people from more genders. Yeah, that's the one easy solution that any company can adopt and see massive changes. And what would you say are the few factors of challenges of implementing a DEIB culture in a workplace and in the tech industry today? I think not everyone takes it as seriously, especially the previous generation. Like if you think about old white men, (laughs) sorry to put them on the spot, but they're very settled in their way of thinking and of work and life. Unless they start thinking differently or you see a different level of leadership, you're not going to see many changes. One, how do you think companies would benefit from having not just women, women of color, non-binary and transgender leaders, but actually higher gender representation at C-suite level and boardrooms with actual mandates? I think the best analogy here would be taking the Stanley virality. Have you heard about the Stanley Cup going viral? It's literally a bottle that is shaped differently and this company is going absolutely viral on TikTok and social media to a point where every woman wants it and the revenue has gone from 70 million to 750 million in one year. And the reason is because earlier this male C-suite decided this cup is for men and a group of women who have some kind of like coupon book, I'm forgetting exactly what they do, but for their community, they asked Stanley to give some kind of discount code for them. And telling them that it's going to work amazing for women. Women love it. And they didn't take these women very seriously. They crushed them away. And so these women, they just made a wholesale order. I'm not sure of the number, but they sold out in two or three days. A massive inventory. And then Stanley was shocked. And they started using them as consultants. And because of their advice, they advised them to like market to women, change the colors, include like pastel colors, etc., etc. And then... Now you see the results. They're at $750 million in one year. So I think women think in a different way and men cannot think for women or like women. So this just speaks for itself. And together we are a great combo. Yeah. What do you think is the reason behind that we don't have more women, women of color, non-binary and transgender leaders in leadership roles today? I don't think it's about incompetence because I personally know very competent women. Recently, I saw this one documentary, which kind of changed my entire perspective. You can take a small example, like a company, right? Like you look at a woman and you're like, okay, she's going to have to go on maternity leave and she's going to have to take so much time off and you probably don't want to recruit her because of X, Y, Z reasons. And then this documentary talked about how in the Nordic region, You get paternal leave and it doesn't matter who you recruit, a woman or a man, either way, they're going to go and leave your company for a certain amount of time. And that made a massive difference. And I think that is also maybe one of the challenges that, yes, some companies can't afford it, like startups probably can't afford it to give paternal and maternal leave. But in terms of the bigger companies, that is definitely something that could be done so that it really doesn't boil down to women having to choose between a life, a career, and um, a family life. Data shows that low funding rates for women-led startups is between 1% to 2% of the funding money, as you mentioned. Black and Latino women has less than 1%. Why do you think this is the reason and how can it be increased? I honestly think that people don't recognize and appreciate the competence in women. And how much do you think the tech industry has changed regarding this subject since you joined? Not very much, unfortunately. And looking back on your career, what one thing you, would you have changed in your working environment to break the bias? Networking a lot. And I think 
changing these perspectives in terms of how we network and how we take those VC calls. Like I remember this one female founder, her angel investor, he sat her down and he basically said, I'm sorry, the tech industry is this way. I'm going to teach you how to like pitch as a guy, <laughs> to act like a guy and like have this kind of trait so that you come across, you know, a certain way and then other people will appreciate it. So I think when I got that advice that she shared with my co-founder and I, we were absolutely in shock and we're like, okay, this is what we have to do. You just got to play the game. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a game. It should just be like, you've created something spectacular. People are appreciating it. Let's go and make this bigger. It shouldn't have to come down to like these sorts of games. And looking forward, what will you do as a leader to improve the bias for the next generation of women, women of color, non-binary and transgenders in tech? I think by simply recruiting and making sure you have so many women on the team, like for us, I think we have more women on the team than men or halfway. So I think that's just like one step that any founder can do very easily. Let us now move on to another hot topic in business today, which is work-life balance and mental health. Priyanka, you have without a doubt a busy lifestyle. How do you take care of yourself to maintain good mental health? So we're in the media tech business. We have so much content, like 100 pieces of content being pushed out on the app every day. And so my Slack is literally shooting me notifications like any time of the day. And so initially it was extremely daunting. And my laptop was literally always open, but I made this conscious decision that I have to, you know, like cut my work hours beyond a point where I literally have to close my laptop, turn off my notifications, and then just have some hours to myself for my own sanity and my own well-being. And I think that has been a game changer. So a little bit of a digital detox and just doing something outside of your laptop. Have you ever experienced burnout? Yeah, it's literally at the beginning of the startup life. It's extremely stressful, lots of anxiety. And you come to a point where you think that if you're not working every moment, you are doing something wrong or you're not moving fast enough. And I think that conception needs to change. You need to be taking care of yourself too, because, you know, you need to have a healthy work-life balance for you to continue on building your startup because it's literally not a sprint. It's a marathon and you need to keep going. So yeah, you got to take care of yourself. What is your advice on how companies can create a more mentally healthy workplace in a new now? A few things that we do, we don't ask employees to be on call 24-7. They have work hours, team meetings, and that's it. So automatically, they have the time to maintain that healthy work-life balance. And even open communication and being empathetic, I think that also allows you, like if you're struggling with anything, like to be able to speak to me about it and then just deal with it together. I think that's healthy. What motivates you every day to get out of bed? To make this happen, literally. <laughs> Now, let us wrap up with a few words of wisdom and a piece of advice for our listeners. Priyanka, what is the best piece of advice you've been given that has helped you during setbacks in your role and career? It's important to be patient. And like I said earlier, I think it's one of my weaknesses to be impatient. Um, when you do something, you want to see results quickly. And it's coming down from like my parents, my uncles and everyone. They always like, you know, it takes a couple of years to build a strong foundation, a strong business. So you cannot be disheartened like in a few months or a few days even. And then what is the worst advice you've ever been given and how did you tackle it? Honestly, the day I started not asking for advice is an issue. Asking for advice is always a good thing. And then it's up to you. You have that the option to reject it. but Literally, what we did in the start was build in the dark and not take any advice, not talk to anyone. And I think that hurt us more than asking people for advice. Is there something you wish you would have known or a skill you wish you had when starting out in the tech industry? Network a lot right from the get-go. Build your community, build your champions right from the get-go. Even if you don't have a product, get people excited. And if you had the ability to go back in time to when you were just at the beginning of your career, what advice will you give to your younger self? Be open to new experiences. And what advice will you give to young girls, women, women of color, non-binary and transgenders who want and trying to break into STEM fields today, especially wanting to become next generation leaders? 
literally that they can do it and it just literally boils down to believing in yourself and last but not least priyanka what is next for you in your role in career in tech what are your career aspirations obviously when it comes to evolve we are building it to be the future of media and so we want evolve to be on every phone globally not stopping until then but um beyond that we will see but this is the first major goal and it's a big one i am so impressed of your hard work and your co-founders hard work thank you very much priyanka for being a guest on the queens of tech podcast sharing your journey with without a doubt by a change and reshape company culture for the next generation of women, women of color, non-binary and transgender leaders in tech. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. If you have worked in the tech industry a minimum of three years and would like to share your journey, please nominate yourself or somebody you know to i at jasminemoradi.com. For more podcast episodes and to learn more about the Queens of Tech initiative, and to support us, visit queensof.tech.